Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yang back at it with another video. So, remember how I told you um, we got to this position and all this chaos, right? With this, there was this Queen B8 move, right? If you did watch the last video, and then there were so many ways, like, remember that moment of Knight H4? Well, if you don't remember, feel free to check that, check out my last video on. Um, the game against RU Ninja. Let's get into the second part of the game. So, Rook D8 happens. And at this point, as a refresher, I am up what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And our friend RU Ninja only has 6 pawns. So, what did I do? I have 2 extra pawns. And when you have extra pawns, when you have extra material, just trade. Bishop takes. I'm just going to play bishop d4. Just solidify my structure. Nothing big. I could have also played b4. There are so many moves here. Queen b7, b4. h6, I just play knight d2. Saying I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go here. I could have also played the move h4, h5. Um, that's another plan. Another plan is to play the move a4, so that after a5 I can go b5. That's another plan as well. But I decided to play knight d2, saying, I'm going to go here. I like my knight on d6. So after knight e7, knight c4, knight d5, knight d6, queen d7, and now a3, preparing the move c4 and just trying to to maybe reroute my queen over to attack this pawn, or just go for some queenside push. a5 happens, I play c4, after knight e7, I play b5, and you can see I'm slowly making progress. Bishop c7, queen b7, let me just attack that queen indirectly, queen d8, b6, if you take, we take with the e pawn, knight f5, d7, just going for it. If you take my bishop, I'm going to pin your queen with queen c8. So after queen g5, saying, you know, I might have a draw, queen here, queen here, right? I just play queen b8, and I say, I'm going to guard this f4 square. King h7, d8 queen, protecting the bishop and threatening to trade queens. Queen c1, king h2, knight takes, queen takes, and after queen takes a, a3, check, bam, queen e5, queen takes, and, well, that is checkmate. So, what happened in this game? Why did I win? Well, number one was after the move knight g6, I had the move queen to a4. And after bishop d4, as a refresher from last video, what move did I have? Well, the move knight to h4, or black, are you ninja, has the move knight to h4. But after a6, well, take, take, knight bd2, and I'm slowly developing. Now, bishop e3 with another slight inaccuracy due to what move from last video? Queen to b8. Queen to b8 saying I'm going to take on e5, or I'm going to take on b2. Bishop d3. Knight b3, bishop e4, and here I bring my queen to a4, which is what I wanted. Queen to d4, and I get another pawn by trapping the bishop, forcing it to trade. And you can see I'm trading down, solidifying my pawn structure, maneuvering my knight to a good square, and really pushing my pawns was the main way I got the dub. So that was that game, and now we move on to another game. This game was, it was a very interesting position as well, but this game featured a sort of a sort of structure similar to the Owens defense. If you remember this sort of structure, the bishop attacks the e4 pawn. There's the d4 pawn. I have the pawn to e6, knight to f3, bishop to b4, knight f6. Now, bishop to g5 is one way to do it. However, after h6, you 
black white has to give up this bishop because otherwise this knight would take on e4 because this is pinned so for example bishop f4 happens then black has the move knight takes e4 because after bishop takes e4 bishop takes knight well you'll notice that this knight is powerless because of course pinned by the king and h6 bishop takes queen takes now i felt like that bishop was of good potential but it's been traded so let's move on castles castles h3 so this is all simple stuff i play takes takes d6 I'm, what i'm trying to do is i'm saying you know this is very even i'm gonna bring my knight out push the pawn to c5 i'm gonna bring my rooks over and just have a good time rook e1 knight d7 i'm not doing much queen d2 e5 here's where i make the break and at this point i was just a little bit worried about e5 but luckily i had the move bishop takes f3 um after pawn takes queen i have bishop takes d1 so luckily i'm okay there um queen d2 now i play the move e5 because i feel like this is a reasonable break and if you play d5 i'm gonna cement my knight on c5 i might in the future play f5 and just Something's bound to happen with this pawn structure. d5 happens, then guess what? I showed you it. Knight c5. c4, and now I say, this bishop, it's, it's, not, it's not looking right, right? So I just reorganize. I tell it, you know what? It was on the wrong diagonal, so now it's going to be on the right diagonal. Bishop f1, what is a good tactical move here? bishop takes h3 you take i'm going to take on e4 takes queen takes f3 bishop g2 queen f6 just saying i'm going to keep my pawn i'm going to continue my pressure with queen g6 i'm going to play f5 one day and then i'm going to bring my other rook over rook e3 very good move in fact i play queen f4 i'm just saying you can't move over because i'm going to take that queen so simple as that Queen to e2, good move as well. I play f5. e takes, rook takes. Rook f3, play queen g5. Just not much. Queen f6 and rook f4 now. Now, I could have also played the move rook to f8 here. It's a matter of choice. Both moves are fine. So I play rook f4. What do I do here? Well, number one, I consider playing the move e4. Number two, I cement my rook on a square where it prevents this bishop from coming to e4. And I kind of felt like during the game that if the bishop ever came to e4, g6, it would do a better job than it does on g2. So that's why I wanted to make a sort of prophylactic move, which again, if you haven't watched my previous videos, is a move that prevents your opponent's idea but that's what my thinking was. So after queen f1, rook f8, f3. So at this point, I was thinking, hmm, you know, this rook doesn't look so great, right? It has no future. It could go here. So I was thinking, number one, I could play h5. Right? I could prevent this rook from coming to g4. It cannot go anywhere else. But what else can I do? I also can play e4. I can make some action happen king h2 let me just take on f3 bishop h1 i'm just going to bring my knight into e4 saying if you go to g4 i'm going to take pawn takes and i'm going to put my queen on h4 simple as that rook takes e4 rook takes rook takes f3 deliver a check rook takes f3 and here i was getting low on top i had like little to no time so i just went for i looked for a queen trade looked for tricks and eventually i got there right because i got there because this bishop was just so bad so unbearably bad because you know even though it defends all these pawns it has no active role because number one 
my pawns are all on Q noted dark squares. So if white's bishop can never attack my pawns, well then my rook is going to be the dominant one around the house. So you can see I'm slowly wiping up the pawns. And what I'm doing is now I'm creating this barrier, getting some more pawns. And now you can see I'm slowly progressing. I don't care because I'm getting to mate. And that is checkmate. So what can we learn from this game? Well, it was even in the opening when I played e5. But I have to say, the move d5 just says, you know, I am preventing your bishop from going places. However, I never plan to take on d4. I don't. I honestly don't. What this d5 move did was it gave me this square. And this square is very important. And also think about it this way, right? The bishop has like a sort of future here. But when you play d5, this guy's future is shut down, but I can reroute it, right? I have alternate goals. However, in this case, this bishop, well, he's now sort of blocked by all these pawns, right? So in a sense, this move, although it does good for white, it also commits to this permanent weakness, right? This permanent harm of white's bishop just not able to be active anymore. Like, for example, what I could do is I could swing my bishop to c8 and go to h3. Meanwhile, this bishop is, he, the bishop is acting like a pawn. Think about it that way. The bishop, all it's doing right now is it's defending these two, defending this guy, and it's not in a, playing an active role. And you you see these this d5 push just it how do I say it? it? It blocked the way. And sometimes that happens. It's a misjudgment because you can't really see things long term, but sometimes when it shows, it shows. So after d5, knight c5 and Bishop takes h3 was just a great tactical shot. And you'll see that after queen f4, I was I was simply in the driver's seat because, first of all, this bishop was just... When, the knight was dominant compared to the bishop, and you don't see that a lot. But in this case, the bishop, the reason why it was bad was because, well, this pawn and this pawn, they just prevent... The bishop from going places, right? They can go here, but that's the farthest white can go, right? This knight, he can hop here. He prevents this bishop, right, from going places. He prevents these pawns from moving forward. And in essence, black here has a very smooth game plan. Well, the bishop here just had a hard time participating. Just think about it this way. The bishop was antisocial. He had to be at a social gathering and he couldn't find enough friends in time. So that was essentially it. He sort of stuck with his old friends and just lived not great. So I would say the only reason why I won this game was because the bishop was just inferior compared to my knight, right? The game was decided all in one move. All in one move. I'm I'm pretty sure you guys know what move it is, but if you would like a rewind, the one move it was decided by was D5. It was a strategic change, a change in pawn structure, and it just made my gameplay so much easier. So thank you for listening. If you enjoy the game, keep going. Right, find your curiosity, have fun, don't let these mistakes drag you down. These are all just mini experiences on your way to triumph. Thank you, and I will see you next time.